Mangwana ni mwalele po vukenja ni be Africa. Welcome to Africa. Good morning. The news and current affairs show bringing you everything you need to know happening on the African continent and beyond. Today is Friday the 22nd of March and you're joined by Ashwin Berry and Glenora Shipura. How are you, Glenn? I'm very good. Um, I had, I think, wonderful um, Independence Day celebrations Absolutely. yesterday. Absolutely, I'm glad you did. Yeah, how did you spend your day? It was restful. It restful. was restful. Yes. Yeah, I spent it watching the celebrations from home. Um, all right. Unfortunately, you know, we couldn't travel all the way to yeah, the north. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was beautiful. All right. Well, getting to what you can expect in today's broadcast, hopes of HIV cure after breakthrough using gene editing scissors. Nearly 70 undocumented foreign nationals escaped repatriation center in Krukesh Dorp. NHS AI test spots tiny cancers missed by doctors. And we'll also be speaking to Mike Sichula, who will be filling us in on the latest news in Zambia. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neopaints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neopaints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Getting into our top stories, scientists claim to have eradicated HIV from infected cells using CRISPR gene editing technology, which won the Nobel Prize. CRISPR acts like molecular scissors, cutting DNA to remove or deactivate harmful sections. The goal is to completely eliminate the virus from the body, but more research is necessary to ensure safety and effectiveness. Current HIV treatments can suppress the virus, but not eliminate it. Presenting their initial findings at a medical conference, the University of Amsterdam team emphasizing that, emphasizes that their work is still in the early stages and not a cure for HIV yet. Now, a total of 69 undocumented foreign nationals awaiting deportation escaped from the Lindela Repatriation Center in Krukersdorp, Gauteng, on Sunday. Only one has been rearrested since. A second attempt was made by deportees on Monday, though this failed. One foreign national succumbed to injuries that occurred during this attempt. The Department of Home Affairs confirmed this only on Wednesday, the day after news broke of the incidents which are now being investigated. The incident took place around 11.50 a.m. on Sunday, the 17th of March, 2024. Lindela is managed by facilities management company Environ Monks, which also provides security services on behalf of the department. Spokesperson Sia Koza said, our investigation revealed there was an altercation between the inmates and Environ Monks management and its security team. It was during this altercation that 69 undocumented foreign nationals escaped. Now an AI tool tested by an NHS hospital trust successfully identified tiny signs of breast cancer in 11 women which had been missed by human doctors. The tool called MIA was piloted alongside NHS clinicians and analyzed the mammograms of over 10,000 women. Most of them were cancer free, but it successfully flagged all of those with Symptoms, as well as an extra 11 the doctors did not identify. At their earlier stages, cancers can be extremely small and hard to spot. The BBC saw Mia in action at NHS Grampian, where they were shown tumors that were practically invisible to the human eye. In our next story, unidentified assailants have taken the lives of 15 individuals in South Sudan's Pibor region, including the commissioner, according to a senior official on Wednesday, this incident marks an escalation of violence within the country. South Sudan, battling with internal conflicts, has faced significant turmoil since gaining independence from Sudan. The strife, primarily along ethnic lines between Dinkas and Nuer, resulted in widespread casualties from 2013 to 2018. The fatal attack occurred on Tuesday as the commissioner of Boma County in Pibo was returning from a village visit. The commissioner and his team visited Nyayet village 
and upon their return they were ambushed, resulting in the deaths of 15 individuals, including the commissioner stated Abraham Kalenk, the Information Minister of Greater Pibo Administrative Area. Now Kenyan doctors stopped providing emergency services at public hospitals yesterday as they escalated a national strike that entered its second week. Thousands of doctors have stayed away from hospitals since last Thursday over poor pay and working conditions despite a court order calling for talks between the doctors and the health ministry. Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union Secretary General Dr. Davi Bimji said the doctors escalated the strike and stopped providing bail minimum services because the government had shown no efforts to resolve the labor dispute. Now, Namibia yesterday celebrated its 34th independence anniversary in the Sambesi region's Katima Mulilo. The event was attended by over 10,000 citizens who were treated to a parachute parade by the Namibia Defense Force as well as several cultural performances. President Dr. Nangolombumba in his keynote address discouraged tribalism, regionalism and racism in the land of the brave, reiterating the call for Namibians to pull together in the same direction. President Bumba also made reference to major projects, projects that he said have the potential to create jobs and put income in the pockets of Namibians, adding that citizens need to hold hands with government for economic prosperity. This footage is courtesy of the Namibia Broadcasting Corporation. Let's take a look. We'll be bringing you the footage actually towards the end of the show. For now, we're going to take a short break before Mike Sichula joins us. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. All right, it's time for us to talk to Mike Sichula in Zambia. Mike Muribwanji. Chile Bueno, Muribwanji, Africa. Good morning to our dear viewers. Good morning indeed. Now all is set for Zambia to host the Sadak Troika meeting in Lusaka. Do tell us more. Yes, the summit will be held at the Murungushi International Conference Center, Kenneth Kaundawin. Uh, President Haka Indeichirema, in his capacity as chair of SADC Organ of Politics, Defense and Security Cooperation, will preside over the summit. The summit will bring together heads of states and government from the republics of Angola, Botswana, Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, Namibia, South Africa, and Zimbabwe, the Kingdom of uh, Lesotho, and Tanzania. The focus of the summit will be addressing peace on security concerns in the Sadiq region, with particular attention on the situation in the eastern part of the DRC and Cabo Darago region in northern Mozambique. So the summit will, will, will kick off on the 23rd of March 2024, that is on Monday next week. has handed over Mopani Copper Mines to Delta Mining Limited, a subsidiary of International Resource Holdings. Can you get into this? Yeah, the International Resource Holdings is initially a subsidiary of uh, the United Arab Emirates. So uh, the, the, the mine has so far, the, the, the new owners have so far injected $130 million and uh, the copper belt energy the copper belt economy is set for a rebound with projected uh, uh, 2000 direct jobs and an, an additional 1000 indirect employment opportunities so yesterday president haka indicated officially handed over the mine to the new owners at a ceremony uh, where he called on zambians to work hard and uh, also ensure that uh, they participate in the development of the country's economy. So the Mopani Copper Mines has not been operational for the last three years. Uh, the mm -hmm. previous owner, Glencoe Mine, pulled out 
and uh, the previous administration also uh, planned to find an equity partner before they lost power. So the new administration under President Haka and the Ichirema have taken over from the responsibility of finding uh, an equity partner uh, in, in, in international resource holdings. So the owners, the new owners will hold 51%, then the Zambian government through the Zambia, the ZCCM are going to hold 49%. So this is a, uh, the, uh, according to the Minister of Mines, he says uh, the, the portion of 1.1 1. 1. 1, 1 billion dollars in the investment by the equity partner will be allocated to clearing areas owed to contractors, suppliers, and resolving debt obligations to Grenco, the previous owners. All right. Now, people cutting trees without permission in Livingstone will now have to pay a fine of up to 28 US dollars. Tell us more, Mike. Yeah, so this is measure is coming about because uh, of uh, the, uh, the bad effects of uh, climate change that have led to reduced rainfall. So the Livingstone is Zambia's tourism capital. So according to the mayor there, she says, uh, in order to prevent people from cutting down of trees, the local authority has decided to to introduce a fee uh, of 750 kwacha, which is equivalent to about uh, 30 United States dollars for anyone that will be found cutting down a tree without permission from the local authority. So a number of Zambians have been talking on social media, via social media platforms, with some saying the 750 kwacha or 28 dollars is far much less. Uh, hence, the authority should have increased it to at least about 28 thousand dollars if you find cutting down a tree because they believe some of the trees are much variable uh, than the 28 US dollars that the local authority will be charging. So it is something that uh, in Zambia we are not used to, uh, where if you cut down a tree. Uh, nobody will, 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 will take interest to, to charge you. But this uh, development by the Livingstone City Council is something that is a pace setter, and uh, a number of uh, civil society organizations are looking forward to see to it how it is going to be implemented so that uh, other, uh, other cities in the other councils in the city in the Zambia can take a lift from it and implement it to prevent uh, cutting down of trees. Well, it definitely does sound like a step in the right direction. And getting into the last of your stories, Muzala Samakonga backed a silver medal at the ongoing African Games despite running with an injury in the final. This is a remarkable feat. Yeah, it is a remarkable feat indeed because Muzala is the current Commonwealth gold medalist. So he went uh, on into this uh, competition carrying an injury which has been recurring uh, from the last uh, uh, a couple of years. So it was something that him himself said that he did expect it, that he was going to be on the podium to receive a medal. However, he believes that uh, the injury... All right, we seem to have issues there with Mike, but certainly worth celebrating Muzala Samukonga, a man who was injured and still managed to bag a silver medal. It only means that when he's in full form, we can expect spectacular things. Now, as Glenn highlighted before we spoke to Mike, Namibia yesterday celebrated its 34th Independence Day in Katima Mulilo, with, of course, the presence of President Dr. Nangolo Mbumba giving a stirring speech as he was essentially calling out any form of divisiveness. This footage is courtesy of the Namibia Broadcasting Corporation. The celebration of Namibia's independence this year here in the Zambezi region provides us an opportunity as citizens to contemplate the meaning of freedom and the value of peace, stability and unity and how we acquire it. How we acquire it, it did not come by itself. It came through sacrifices. It came through 
crossing the rivers of blood. And therefore, when we celebrate, we know what we are celebrating. It's something that cost us much. It's something that brought us to the point that we can take our own decisions without anyone else from other country telling us what to do and what not to do. That is worth celebrating. Draw on the inspiration of the legacy left by our founding president, our Dr. Nuyoma, our second president, Dr. Pohamba, and our late president, Dr. Gaingo, to guard the peace, to guard the unity, to guard the, post, the stability we are having today. Remember, as President Gaingo used to say, it is easy to destroy what was taken a long time to build, but it is not easy to rebuild, end of quote. We emphasize peace, unity, and harmony. Those who are planning to disturb peace, unity, and economic development in Namibia are enemy of all our people. True citizens of Namibia should not support or follow these individuals or groups who have chosen, to the, who have chosen the path of division instead of the path of unity. We all have a collective responsibility to ensure that Namibia maintains its reputation, reputation which we acquire by being what we are and behaving in a professional manner. Namibia as a peaceful and stable country. Alright, it's time for us to get into economic news and we start off in South Africa where residents rich and poor have seen a shortage of water. Now, while hot weather has shrunk reservoirs, crumbling infrastructure after decades of neglect is also largely to blame. The public's frustration is a danger sign for the ruling African National Congress, whose comfortable hold on power since the end of the apartheid in 1990s faces its most serious challenge in an election in May. A country already famous for its horse hours long electricity shortages is now adopting a term called water shedding, the practice of going without water from the term load shedding or the practice of going without power. Now, the nearly year-long conflict between Sudan's military and paramilitary forces has put the African nation on course to become the world's worst hunger crisis with malnutrition soaring and already claiming children's lives, the UN Humanitarian Office warned on Wednesday. Adam Wasorunu, the director of humanitarian operations, told the UN Security Council that already one-third of Sudan's population of 18 million people face acute food insecurity and catastrophic hunger levels could be reached in some areas of the Western Darfur region by the time the lean season arrives in May. All right, those have been our economic news stories. Let's head over to the indicators just before Ari brings us the spot.
Hello and welcome to today's Sports Rep Show. I am your host, Jesse Jackson. Kauraika. In replay, Namibia, who had won the toss for the first time on this tour, Good day everyone, time for international sports news, starting off with tennis news, both on the WTA for women's and... Good day everyone, time for international sports news, starting off with tennis news first, uh, the Miami Open that uh, started, uh, that is in Florida in the USA, it is a big uh, strong field, it's a thousands tournament on the WTA and ATP, meaning the best players in the world in action um, in both uh, the WTA and the ATP Tour. Uh, firstly on the women's side, on the WTA Tour, it is uh, Donna Velsic that beat Karolina Pliskova, uh, Pliskova former world number 10, and uh, she beat uh, 6-4, 6 and 6-2 to advance to the next round and also Danielle Collins of the USA good result for her beating Bernarda Pera by 3-6, 6-1 and 6-1 and Camila Giorgio also through beating Magdalena French by 6-4 and 6-2. All the top seeds in the tournament uh, on the women's and men's side of the draw will have their first games uh, of the tournament in the second round on Friday. On the main side of the draw, it is a former world number one, Andy Murray. Um, he uh, beat Matteo Berrettini. Tough game for him in the first set. Berrettini also a former world top 10 player. Uh, Andy Murray winning that 4-6, 6-3 and 6-4 to advance to the second round. And also Denis Shapovalov of Canada. He beat uh, Luciano Dardini by 6-3, 6-7 and 6-4. Also through to the next round. The number one seed in the tournament is uh, Carlos Alcaraz. Continuing international sports news with golf news, the first major of the year will be on the 11th of April, that is on the men's calendar, that will be the Masters at Augusta National and the good news for the organisers is that Tiger Woods confirmed that he will be playing in the tournament, he is a five-time former champion and uh, he's been battling with injury quite recently and he had a car accident a few years ago and battling with his red, uh, right ankle but uh, he confirmed that he is uh, fit and ready to go to play in the 2024 Masters. The defending champion, John Rahm, also confirmed to be playing in the tournament. He is currently playing on the Live Golf Initiative, the Breakaway Golf League, not being able to play on the PGA, but he is uh, able to and allowed to defend his title at the Masters, and that is John Rahm of Spain. And closing off today's international sports news with soccer news, um, it is Liverpool that confirmed that they've appointed Richard Hughes as the club's new sporting director, and that will be effective from... Let's briefly look at the highlights from the broadcast. Hopes of HIV cure after breakthrough using gene editing scissors. And nearly 70 undocumented foreign nationals escaped repatriation in South Africa. South Africa's largest city battles unprecedented water crisis. And with that, we've come to the end of the broadcast. Thank you for joining us all week on Africa Good Morning. From me, Glenora Shipura. And me, Ashun Beri, Sreja Kanaka.